Hey guys, and welcome back. Alexa, off. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna be talking about a new camera for me, the Mamiya 7. I'm gonna give you my initial thoughts on this camera, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and just some of the things I've personally noticed while I've been using this camera for around three weeks. So back in March, I was really lucky to be able to go on a three week trip to South Africa for a family wedding, which actually came to an end just as most countries were preparing to shut down for the coronavirus outbreak. It's only now that I'm realizing how lucky we were with the timing of this trip and how fortunate we were for this wedding to be able to go ahead without any problems. Anyway, so this trip was by no means a photography trip. It was a trip with my family and it was based around traveling the garden route, which is a 300 kilometer route along the southernmost point of the South African coast. So we traveled from Port Elizabeth to Cape Town. And along the route, we stopped in loads of different locations. We did a load of touristy kind of things. We visited some game reserves. We stopped in some seaside towns. And we basically tried to do as many things as we could within our three weeks while we were there. So before this trip, I managed to pick up a Mamiya 7. The reason for this was that I wanted to have a medium format camera that was a bit more portable than the Pentax 67, which I took to Japan last year. I've really enjoyed using the Pentax, but I found it to still feel like a little bit of a liability to take out and about, and was definitely not the easiest camera to travel with. It took up a little bit too much of my baggage allowance, and I wanted to see what other cameras would perhaps suit this kind of travel photography a bit more than a Pentax 67. The Mamiya 7 has been on my radar for a while, but I wasn't sure how I was going to get on with it. So this trip was a bit of a test, really, to see how much I enjoyed it. First impressions were great. This camera looks amazing. I think personally, the only camera that looks better than this camera is the Mamiya 6 or the Mamiya 7 II. The only thing I would say about this is that I wish the lenses were as slim as the body. A modern style pancake lens on this type of camera would be amazing. But still, this camera is super light compared to the Pentax 67 or the Mamiya RZ67, which are the medium format cameras that I've used in the past. Considering this is a medium format camera, it's pretty amazing how mobile it actually is and how easy it is to take around with you. That's probably one of the biggest things that I took away from using this camera was that it was just great to take out with me. It was just so much easier than previous experiences with medium format. So I have the 65 millimeter F4 lens for this camera and that was definitely a conscious decision when shopping around. I don't see myself ever using this camera for portraits. If I wanted to shoot portraits I would use a different camera. So if I do keep this camera it'll only ever be used for travel, for landscapes or for perhaps street photography. The fact that this camera is a rangefinder camera actually threw me off in the beginning. The test roll I put through it was completely out of focus because I was assuming what I was looking at through the viewfinder was actually showing me the focus. In hindsight, this is pretty silly for me to have overlooked, but I think it is an easy mistake to make if you're used to using an SLR or you're used to using rangefinders like a Yushika T5, which is a point and shoot and therefore has autofocus. So when I was shooting with this, I often found myself actually forgetting to focus on what I was shooting but it is an easy thing to do if you're not used to working in that way. I also kept forgetting to take the lens cap off before composing and shooting an image. So a number of shots that I took and was quite excited about came out as complete blanks. These were quite easy habits for me to get out of, but it still did cost me probably two rolls in total at the beginning with either blank frames or out of focus images. I decided not to take a light meter with me and instead I would just rely on the internal light meter within the camera. The internal light meter seems pretty reliable on this. There was no images that were really sort of messed up at all by the light meter or by the reading that I was using. The only thing I would say was that I did find it a little bit difficult to actually see the reading when I was looking through the viewfinder, especially in very bright conditions. In lower lights, this wasn't a problem. It's bright enough. But when I was out during the day, I was struggling to actually be able to see what sort of shutter speed I needed to use for certain images. So at times I found myself 
kind of having to cover up the camera a bit more, try and block the light from getting in between myself and the camera just so I could see really clearly through the viewfinder. But yeah, it wasn't a huge issue. It was just one thing that I noticed. In terms of portability, I was able to take the Mamiya 7 out on day trips and little adventures that I probably wouldn't have taken the Pentax 67 with or would have been a bit more of a pain to carry around with me. The body on the 7 is so much easier to handle and to have strapped up if you're wanting to sort of like climb about or go on these little adventures. While we were in Cape Town, we went on a hike up to the top of Table Mountain, which actually at points gets quite intense it gets quite rocky and it wasn't really that much of a problem for me with the Mamiya 7. I think if I'd taken the Pentax 67 on that same trip I don't think it would have been as fun. I think I would have been a bit too worried about the camera it's probably too heavy it would have tired me out a lot more so definitely having the Mamiya 7 for those more adventurous moments was a huge benefit. So overall I really enjoyed this camera so far it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to and to kind of get into the habits of shooting with a range finder. I still think the purpose for this camera is going to be slightly different to what I use my other cameras for and it's definitely not going to be a replacement for an RZ or a Pentax 67 at all. But I am excited to have something that's much easier to take on trips and should open up a lot more opportunities for different types of photography in the future. So thanks so much for watching this video guys. If you enjoyed it please leave a like below. Also feel free to drop a comment. I go through nearly all of the comments and have a read so if you've got any questions or anything you want to share about this camera please leave it in the comments and I will check those out. So thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you in the next episode.